The aim of any contract should be to record an agreement, safeguard business, avoid disputes, and not annoy the parties who have to use it. Most of the contracts that I read on a regular basis don't come anywhere near any of those objectives. The problem is we've ended up with a really dysfunctional way of doing contracts. We do a number of things really badly. The first thing we do is we clause dump. So when a case comes out or a bit of legislation or we have a dispute on a project, we add another clause, hoping that that will solve the issue, square the circle, so to speak. Main contractors in particular tend to put clauses on their subcontractors that they would never sign up to. Letters of intent seem to have all sorts of random things included, which aren't even relevant. Collateral warranties are the same. So we have way too many clauses which don't actually do anything, which don't change behaviours, which don't uh, manage the project, which don't do anything except maybe a very small number of circumstances make a tiny little bit of difference if it ever went before a high court judge. So we don't want to clause dump. We want everything in there to have real meaning, real purpose and real effect. The second thing we tend to do in construction is we tend to risk dump. So standard form contracts have a list of events which pass risk and we all assume we know what that means. But when I train companies, I don't think that's true. But we also have lots of playing between the companies as to who's got the commercial balance and so who's going to pass risk. Clients, main contractors tend to dump risk down their supply chain. They don't consider it to be a supply network where we all are utterly dependent on one another. Oh no, we're going to risk dump. So that's the second thing we do in most contracts. The third thing we do is paper dump. The contracts and their annexes go on and on and on and on. We need them to see our policies, our anti-slavery policy, our anti-bribery policy, our health and safety policy, our quality assurance policy. And the further you are down the tiers in the construction sector, the more paperwork you have to read. I've seen letters of intent that are short letters of intent for annexing the tender documents, the proposed contract, all sorts of things which would not be relevant for a temporary short form contract. So let's not use the contract as a way of just dragging in anything. It's not like a big fishing net for paper, for risks and for clauses. No, a contract is meant to be a tool to help us do business. End of. So what's getting on your go? Which of the tools can you not do business with? If you deal with letters of intent, collateral warranties or third party rights schedules, consultant appointments or services agreement, small works or building contracts of any size or subcontracts, then maybe you should just grab a copy of one of my books. OK. It will help you to understand why things are in there, help you to understand what happens if you fail to put something in there and give you real skills and confidence to negotiate those contracts better. You get checklists and samples and all sorts of things that can help you do business because let's face it you want to be doing business not dealing with the paperwork so grab a book get some confidence and write yourself a contract that safeguards your business without annoying the people you do business with